I'm here in Redmond in building 40 with Vijay Tavari. Vijay, you are, um, I don't know which level you have, S maybe principal program manager? Yeah, so I'm a group program manager, group for, program manager for the Azure Stack team, and I run the team that's responsible for developing all the management software that uh, enables you to run Azure Stack in your data centers, as well as the hardware ecosystem for Azure Stack. So I had a three-day deep dive Azure Stack, and I must say I'm very impressed uh, with all your s the stuff That's you are doing. Stuff. What I understand, and that was very important for me, Azure Stack is Azure in my data center, customers' data center. That's very important, right? It is. In fact, you know, the that is one of the most important things that we want customers to recognize, mm -hmm. that we are really taking Azure out from our data centers and we are building it in such a way so you can actually now run it in your data center. Mm -hmm. But that also means now that the customer takes the responsibility of operating it, making sure that it's 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 operating correctly, that the hardware is correct, and you'll be able to patch it and keep it updated. And you have to manage the entire operational life cycle, which today in the context of Azure, we, Microsoft, do it. Now we are going to give you the keys to actually go make that happen. Yeah, and Azure, Azure is quite a large deployment. Uh, I've heard it several times that uh, the, the, the smallest thing is maybe 1,000 computers, and even the storage stems are humongous. They're so huge. they're really huge. So you are now bringing that to an even smaller data center. So how, how can I sh start with this? What, what is the smallest footprint we have? So, you know, the smallest footprint you can actually start with is just one physical server. So I've got one physical server starting at my desk, yeah, and you can, yeah. but you can actually, you know, use that to get a small deployment of Azure Stack. Understand what Azure Stack yeah. is, develop against it, and you get a developer experience, get a little bit of an IT yeah. pro experience as well. But the smallest, you know, uh, the production-supported uh, Azure Stack deployment will be just four physical servers mm -hmm. plus three switches, two mm -hmm. top of rack switches and one switch for the baseboard management control mm -hmm. or the BMC switch. So we've taken what, what, what in Azure runs at a scale of about a thousand servers mm -hmm. and we have shrunk down everything so that you can get it down to about four servers. Mm -hmm. And that should enable you know, lots of customers to be able to run Azure in their data center and then experience and utilize those capabilities in their data center. I like the one machine deployment to learn with it because uh, it's a little bit of an investment to buy four machines and they are not available yet. We will talk about that later, but to buy four machines to get to get the stuff known. And so I like a lot the one machine deployment and I hope you you will have it at GA for POCs or that people get known to the stuff. That would be great. Uh, we are now at TP2. You recently announced the uh, the technical preview two of Azure Stack. There will be TP3, and there will be sometime in the future the general availability. Uh, so, wh what what would you say is is the most important part of uh, when when I start with Azure Stack? What should I do with it? What should I test? Fair. So, the first thing, Karshan, I want to reinforce that you know the the single box proof of concept will always be available. That's great. Right. The other thing you should recognize is that, you know, Azure Stack has to keep pace with Azure. Yeah. And that means you have to prepare yourself because your customers who are using Azure by, by means of Azure Stack are going to ask you to keep abreast with what Azure is doing. Yeah. And that means you have to make sure that you update Azure Stack as soon as we are able to release the next yeah. update. We are doing a lot of effort to automate the deployment, but you need to get comfortable that you can actually do and update the deployment. And you can get started now. We released TP2, mm -hmm. right? And I think within about six weeks or so, we'll do another release. It's right. not TP3. Really? It'll be another release. It will be an update. It'll be an update. So yeah. I want you to go redeploy mm -hmm. the technical preview and then get started again because there'll be something new in six weeks. Yeah, that's cool. And then maybe six weeks after that, we'll do another release. So I want you know all of you to really recognize that this thing is going to be you know moving at a very mm -hmm. fast pace. And it is incumbent and responsibility of Microsoft to make sure that when we provide you an update, it works correctly. Now, I'm not saying that one single box can be updated. That will always be a redeploy. Yeah. But you need to get accustomed to really redeploying quickly and then experimenting and really learning what Azure Stack is. Mm -hmm. So at this point of time, you know, we had a number of great sessions at Ignite. I'm sure you can give your links to audiences. I'll, about, I'll do that. Right? And you should tell them to go look at all those sessions in sequence so they can really get an understanding of what Azure Stack is. 
because a lot of people use you know VMware, they use uh, VMM, they use Hyper-V, so they have an understanding of what that looks like, but Azure is different, right? So we want customers to start training themselves on what is Azure, what is Azure Stack, what are the new things that they have to learn, because this is a huge opportunity yeah. for the IT pros to really sort of take the next step in their careers and learn about what cloud operational model really looks like. So get started with TP2, learn how to monitor it, learn how to you know deploy it, the single node, learn what services you can offer mm -hmm. to your customers, learn how you can deploy VMs, learn what you can do with blobs, tables, queues, understand the concept of plans, mm -hmm. offers, you know, how are they actually given to customers, what does the subscription mean, how do you set quotas on those subscriptions so that customers don't over-provision resources, mm -hmm. all those things that, that IT pros need to really get familiar with right now because those are the underpinnings of what Azure Stack is and what Azure will be in your mm -hmm. data center. And then over time, we'll release more services, we'll release web apps. So when that comes out, you know, take a swing at it and understand how to deploy it because you'll have to manage that deployment as well. So you should really be, you know, you know, excited and learning about all the new things that we're going to do with Azure Stack. I have to get my head around uh, ARM. I think it's a great thing, but you have to get used to it. It's not like PowerShell where you code what, what should be done. You describe your deployment. And uh, I had an interview with Mark van Eyck. Uh, he, they, he wrote a white paper. He's now at Microsoft. Right. You know that, of right, course. Right. He, he wrote a white paper about ARM uh, templates, how you build it. Uh, and I have to get used to it. It's uh, it's and another I, way of thinking, right? I would encourage the audience to actually, and that you don't have to wait for Azure Stack. You can start that in, in Azure, Azure today, yeah. right? So you can really understand what an ARM language, template, template language looks like, mm -hmm. how to describe resources, how they're interconnected, and how that application model is actually then deployed on Azure yeah. or on Azure Stack. So I think getting familiarity with ARM, you know, you're right, it's, it's, it's a critical skill that I think IT pros must mm -hmm. you know, begin to sort of absorb. Mm -hmm. Because that is how applications will be, your developers will actually model applications using an ARM template. And then if you understand what the ARM template is, you'll be able to better serve your customers. So uh, we have now TP2 and uh, we, we talked about already, there will be another TP and then there will uh, be GA. Right. Uh, you announce it for uh, middle, mid, of mid, mid, middle of next year. And then there will be uh, how you call it, solutions available from different vendors. So right. at least for node deployment and uh, uh, why is it so important that uh, you partner with vendors uh, for the Azure Stack uh, um, ecosystem? That's a great question, Carson, right? So the first and foremost thing is that, you know, Azure is, is a very big, you know, yeah. piece of software. There's lots of things that runs to keep Azure operational. Yeah. We have taken all that complexity and shrunk it down to four systems. Mm -hmm. But on four systems, remember, we are not using any SAN, right? All the storage subsystem is entirely encompassed as a part of the hardware and software. Yeah, storage basically, right? That's basically correct. Right, yeah. But then we have to make sure that all the physical network switches are configured correctly for storage yeah. spaces direct. We need to make sure that the firmware that runs on the NICs, that runs on the uh, in the BIOS, that runs on the on the disks, on the disk controllers and along with the drivers and the software stack, they are all matched. Yeah. And we can keep this updated you know, as frequently as possible. That, you know, for us, when we start, it's a new product. Mm -hmm. It'll take us a little while before we can actually say you can do it on any hardware that we haven't seen before. Yeah. So initially, we want to start off and give the customer the best experience on hardware that we know. Yeah. Then as we get better, as we get more experience with our customers, yeah. then we'll be able to say, okay, you know, we'll now allow you to do it on different hardware. But in order for customers and us to be more successful initially, we have to constrain the hardware that you run on. Yeah, of course. And that's how we are starting. And in fact, the best example I give is, you know, we don't run any random hardware in Azure. Azure is, is fine-tuned. We run, we know exactly what hardware we run. You know, no random hardware comes in. And it's very specific what version of the firmware runs. That's how we keep Azure operational. Yeah. So you have to think of it in the same manner. Now, I know that some customers are going to have concerns because I don't buy this gear, I don't buy from this vendor, and it is a fair concern. We hear them, and we will certainly, when we are in a position, we will open up the opportunity to do on different hardware. But initially, I think for initially for a few, you know, for at least for some time to see, we will be focused on sort of making sure that with integrated systems, 
customers have a successful experience with Azure Stack. And you have three vendors already. Uh, we have that three vendors, and I'm, I'm happy to tell your audience that we've heard feedback. There are other vendors people want, and we are certainly working with other vendors. And when we have done enough work with them that we are confident that we have a product to announce, yeah. we will announce other vendors as well. You said an important thing. You will, um, as I learned, uh, Microsoft will deliver a new software for, of course, Azure Stack, but you will also deliver, uh, or in, in, in combination with a vendor, drivers, firmware, so that the system is optimal for Azure Stack. That is and correct. this is important. So it's an integrated system or how you call it. So it's a whole experience. It's not uh, Azure Stack will run on this system differently than on, uh, on another system because I configured it not correctly. It is. It will be the same experience on on the same hardware everywhere. I assume at least that is correct. That is correct. And not only that, you know, even the experience that we give you for updating the whole system will include, you know, the the ability to update the software as well as all the firmware and the drivers in in one package. Mm -hmm. So the automation will allow you know the whole system to be updated in unison. So you don't have to you know then separately do something for the firmware and then separately for the software. That's the whole value proposition of yeah. the integrated system. Make sure that the whole thing works correctly. And I know how important that is because we did a lot of storage spaces deployment and we started with it fr from the beginning. And there were some firmware issues with especially SSD uh, uh, um, um, disks and we, we suffered a lot. So I think it's very important that you test this stuff and uh, know where you are running on because for the experience it's it's great absolutely and in fact you know i know today we don't have the time but the next time you come i'd like to show you our labs you know where we are running these racks and racks of gear where oh, we are doing this cool. continuous validation because that's how we know that when we are giving you an update it actually works on your system yeah. and imagine if i've got a system which i don't know and you're running in some you know unknown hardware how will we be able to do that initially now, over time, I think as we understand how people use these systems, we'll get better being able to sort of, you know, have more abstraction between the hardware and software. But at least initially, and as you pointed out, you know, Storage Spaces Direct has deep interactions with, with, the, uh, with, 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 with the firmware levels. You have to have the network cards in a particular way to all of this to work together. And I think over time, we'll get better. But initially, you know, let's make sure that we have a good experience of all of us uh, together. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you are doing great work here and I, I like uh, in talking to you about Azure Stack and all the best for Azure Stack and I'm looking at it and I can't wait for next year to when it's GA and I know you will continually involve Absolutely. it over the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you so much, Kasim. Really appreciate it.